Hi guys, uh, this one is part two of uh, my series on Oswald Spangler's Decline of the West. So if you haven't watched part one, uh, make sure you check it out first. So each culture, okay, and Spangler has like seven cultures and, you know, kind of a lot of historians and philosophers have challenged him on this point. You know, because, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, perhaps too big of a scale, you know, like, for instance, you know, Spangler uh, classifies Romans and Greeks as, you know, just one culture, you know, he, uh, you know, kind of mixes uh, uh, Armenians and Persians and Turks and Arabs into essentially one culture, you know, so, uh, but at the same time, other historians such as Arnold Toynbee, you know, broke it down into like 60, you know, distinct, uh, you know, cultures, which is perhaps too much. So uh, anyways, um, Spengler says that for each culture, there is a fundamental concept which is derived from its physical landscape. So let me give you an example. For Greeks, okay, uh, as, you know, complicated and as diverse as, you know, Greek philosophers and mathematicians were, they never stepped outside of the body, okay, physical body. So, you know, if you look at, you know, Greece, well, what is it like? It's just uh, essentially small area with small islands in the Aegean Sea, you know, just kind of small enclosed bodies, okay, and Greek philosophy, Greek literature, Greek art is all based on the body. Okay. So if you understand this concept, you pretty much can understand anything that any Greek has ever written, you know, so, uh, you know, Greek philosophers, uh, you know, from the pre-Socratics, uh, you know, like, um, Anaxagoras and Anaximenes and Anaximander and Thales and, you know, later on Plato, Aristotle, they never really stepped outside of the body. Okay, they uh, analyzed objects. Okay, um, like there is no concept of sort of infinite space like we have it, you know, in the Western culture. Okay, uh, there is no infinite, like for instance, there is no calculus. You know, that's kind of an interesting question. You know, why didn't the Greeks have calculus? And Archimedes gets really close to, you know, calculus in one of his works, but. You know, he never really crosses the line, okay? The Greeks stayed within the physical body, okay? Uh, here is another fascinating question. Um, I'm sure you have seen Greek art, okay? You've seen those, you know, beautiful vases, and, you know, and they look black, red, and orange, okay? Really curious question. Have, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen blue in a Greek vase? And, you know, the answer is never, okay? Like, there is literally no color blue, in Greek art, you know, and Nietzsche even went as far as to say that perhaps, you know, ancient Greeks were colorblind, uh, you know, but there is a better explanation, of course. Um, Greeks, you know, did not use blue because blue brings up infinite ideas. Like blue is the least you know, physical color to some extent. Like, I mean, if you look at all the objects, you know, around you, you know, I mean, you have these, you know, kind of, you know, if you're an ancient Greek, you see a tree, you know, you see your house, you know, these things are fine. But then you look up at the sky. I mean, it's this blue, you know, space, which does not have a limit. And, you know, it's not an enclosed body. And, you know, same thing with the sea. Like, I mean, it's, it really goes beyond, you know, kind of, measurable physical objects okay so greeks you know greek culture stayed sort of within the body okay that's the central you know key concept of the you know greek mind was that everything is an object okay so you know that's you know greek art and you know same thing goes for greek mathematics you know what was greek mathematics you know the quintessentially greek mathematics it was geometry okay and i'm sure you know all these you know things like you know pythagorean theorem which was by the way kind of plagiarized i mean pythagoras was not uh, you know the author of this you know theorem he uh, got it from the middle east and egypt um so 
Greek mathematics is geometry. Why? Because geometry deals with objects, with physical bodies, essentially. So, uh, you know, a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned how they, you know, Archimedes got close to calculus, but he did not invent it. Like he, he was essentially talking about, you know, measuring volume. You know, you can kind of break down volume into smaller and smaller pieces. And, you know, a lot of mathematicians are like, well, you know, I mean, he pretty much understood calculus, but, you know, he just for some reason didn't. But you see, this was going against Greek mindset, okay? Kind of having an infinite number of infinitely small, you know, spaces is against Greek central you know concept that everything is a body okay so that's why greeks have not invented you know calculus um, and uh this is the central you know theory about you know that's what spengler says you know the greek civilization was all about it was about a body so what happens once uh you know like we said we introduce the apollonian principle and you know, we accept kind of rationality and, you know, we start to decline. What happens then? So what happens then is culture gets replaced by civilization. So young cultures, you know, they start as, you know, cultures as these, you know, Dionysian life affirming, you know, groups of people. And then they live their you know, lifespan, essentially, and once they get very old, you know, they essentially die, and that's when civilizations arise, and civilizations die, too. So, uh, you know, if we got, you know, we had this Greek, you know, culture, which essentially existed until uh, Alexander the Great, well, what came after that? The Romans came. So, Romans were the civilization, uh, essentially, Greek culture got replaced by Roman civilization. So that's what Spengler says happens all the time. You know, you start as a culture, you know, which exists for approximately a thousand years. And then it essentially exhausts all of its possibilities and it, you know, becomes a civilization and it dies. All right. So in the next video, we'll clarify uh, what this actually means. And it's going to get much more interesting from this point on.